Okay, so it's been a very long time since I recorded a video and I just wanted to put something out there. I don't know who's watching, but anyway, my name is Jean and I, that's my dog barking in the background. I suffer from depression, severe depression. I also am a patient, um, I also have epilepsy since um, 12 years old. It's moderately controlled with medication and a vagal nerve stimulator. If you don't know what that is, look it up on the internet. Anyway, back to my depression. Um, this video might be long, I don't know if you want to watch it or not, but if you're really into knowing what's up with depression, if you want to know if you can relate to this video, watch this one. Um, it's not easy to live with depression, but it can be manageable. You have to learn coping skills. You have to have family support. It's not something that you can handle on your own. If you think you can, unfortunately, person out there watching this video, you have to reach out. Because isolation is your worst enemy. Coping skills. Deep breathing. Taking a five, ten minute break from what is upsetting you. <laughs> My dog. Um, like the five to ten minute break from the person who is upsetting you, if that is your trigger. Recognizing your triggers. Is it anxiety? Is it group settings? Is it a person, a place, or an emotion? And believe it or not, this might sound lame. I thought it was lame at first. Journal. Not a dear diary sort of malarkey, but maybe just a spiral bound notebook and a word. Today sucks. Or, or sentence. Or a, a word to describe your emotion. Or maybe even colored pencils. A color that fits the emotion you're feeling today. I write journals. An anger journal. Hate letters that you write down. It could be sloppy. It could be messy. It could be neat. It could be to someone, to the person that upset you. But you don't give it to the person. You write it out. Get that emotion, get that feeling, get that sadness, that negativity out on paper. This is a coping skill, mind you. Get that emotion out on paper and then tear it up. Soak it in water. That's another option. You could tear it up. You can soak it in water. You can burn it as long as it's burnt inside a trash can that won't melt. Or, or a coffee can. Uh, just get rid of it. And then watch that piece of paper or pieces of paper wilt away. That way it, it takes that emotion out of you. Those are coping skills. Another one, like I said just moments ago, is family support. You have to reach out. I tried holding all of this stuff in, all of my thoughts, feelings, emotion. I tried isolating myself, thinking that I can handle it. I can do this on my own. No. I tried... Yeah, I tried committing suicide. That was my darkest moment. But my husband intervened. 
my psychiatrist intervened. I reached out. I reached out to my family. And the benefit of my family is that my parents, they're both in the medical field. I don't know about you and what your fam what your parents or, or family members, what their occupations are, but my mom and dad, they're both in the medical field. And um, my sister too. Um, I have two sisters, but one of them is also a nurse. Um, and they both made me recognize that I also have a chemical imbalance, my medications, because I'm also epileptic and my antidepressant. All of those chemical imbalances were affecting me in, in such a way that my depression was speaking instead of me. Jean, that's my name. So all of these factors came about. Do you know what I mean? So, I reached out to my family, like I said, I feel like a broken record, but my two sisters, the middle sister, and the nurse, they researched some hospitals for me and I voluntarily admitted myself and stayed there for five days away from my family away from the world where I had to fake being happy fake my emotions and had to pretend everything was fine pretend everything was okay had to put on a face and now in that in that facility I was able to be truly depressed I was surrounded by people who had the same diagnosis as me if I wanted to break down and cry I could if I wanted to scream and be angry and just let my emotions out, I could. I didn't have to be fake. And it felt right. I could finally, as you so want to say it, I could finally breathe. And in that facility, I learned ways to express myself in a healthy way. I was able to recognize my triggers. I was able to accept my life and my decisions for what they were and learn that making small goals for myself every day makes life easier and that's something that you can do too whether you're suffering from depression or not you're not alone I was surrounded with people like me people as young as in their late teens some people in there old enough to be my grandma and grandpa people who have been married for uh, 20 plus years I've only been married for eight
I was hopeless before I went and admitted myself <clears throat> to that facility. I was hopeless. But now, I'm hopeful. I'm in a good place. My husband and I are in a good place. My family and I, we are, ex we are excited about the future. Every day matters. I want to let you know that it can for you too. All right. Come back and watch this video as often as you want if you want to get some motivation. I'll be right here.